Like in the last class, what did we do? We did the electromagnetic radiations. Right? We did the spectrum, we did the hydrogen spectrum, and we also did emission and absorption spectrum. When we are talking of electromagnetic radiations, it is said that electromagnetic radiations can very easily and very successfully explain certain characteristics of uh, waves. Like for example, dispersion of waves, dispersion is what? The scattering of the wave or uh, refraction, reflection, all these phenomena they are shown by waves or they are the wave characters. And also with dispersion of waves, the intermixing of waves was also very easily explained by taking electromagnetic theory into consideration. But electromagnetic theory was unable to explain certain phenomena like it could not explain the black body radiation, it could not explain the photoelectric effect. Both these effects, they were explained by the quantum theory of radiation, right? So when we are talking of the quantum theory of radiation, as I just said, that the electromagnetic radiation was unable to explain two phenomena. The first one, which was known as a black body radiation. First of all, what is a black body? Black body is an opaque substance. It is an opaque substance. What is opaque? We have three types of substances. We have transparent, we have translucent and we have opaque. You have done this in physics, right? So trans, transparent is you can just see, see through properly from that object, right? And translucent is you can't see through very clearly. It can only, it can absorb certain light. And what is opaque? Opaque is something through which you cannot see at all. That is what opaque is. Okay, so it is an opaque object that emits thermal radiation. So any opaque object which is emitting thermal radiation, that is what a black body is. So basically when we are talking of a perfect black body which absorbs all the light, which is falling onto it, okay? and does not reflect any. So it is what it is, at room temperature, such a body is going to appear as black. So it is a perfect absorber and it is a perfect emitter, right? It is going to absorb all the radiations That is what a black body is. So it appears to us as black. Okay. Now when we increase the temperature, this is what we are seeing at room temperature. If we increase the temperature, then in that case what is going to happen? When we heat it, we say that as the temperature is increased, the black body tries to go towards blue color of the electromagnetic Vibhya region. So let's once again re take a recap of the Vibhya region. Okay, so when we are increasing the temperature, initially it is going to appear to us as red, right? And when we further increase it, it will appear to us as orange. And when we further increase the temperature, the black body or the iron rod, if we are taking an example, that appears to us as blue. Okay, now it was suggested that as and when the temperature will keep on increasing, the uh, wavelength will keep on becoming shorter. Okay, so if more and more radiation or more and more temperatures are increased, a time should come when it should, the radiation emitted should reach below the Vibhya region. And below the Vibhya region, which region is coming? That is the UV light. Isn't it? But that does not happen. Basically, because increase in temperature, the black body radiation is what we are talking of over here, that is totally temperature dependent.
right? That is totally temperature dependent. So, if we keep on increasing the temperature and we are considering the wave theory, then according to the electromagnetic spectrum, the radiations emitted should come below the wave cure region into the UV region which rarely does not happen. So over here the electromagnetic wave theory that was given a question mark. Right? Black body radiation was not explained on the basis of what? On the basis of electromagnetic theory. Have you understood? Okay. Then there was two scientists who was working on to it simultaneously. The first scientist was Max Planck and the second scientist was Lord Rayleigh. Lord Rayleigh. Both of them were working on the black body radiation and they described that if more and more intensity of radiation is given, then the intensity of black body radiation was a function of its wavelength. Right? As and when the intensity was increasing, the wavelength kept on increasing to a certain point and then the wavelength started, the intensity started decreasing and the wavelength was increasing. Okay? So it was as the temperature of the black body increases, total amount of light emitted per second increases. Total light emitted per second increases and the wavelength of the spectrum peak shifts to the blue color. That is what we have said over here. That if we keep on increasing the temperature, then it starts getting red, then orange, then green and then to blue. It keeps on shifting towards blue and blue has a shorter wavelength. Okay. So, for example, if as I told you, we are uh, heating an iron bar. When we heat an iron bar, initially the iron bar will start appearing to us as red. Okay? We further increase the temperature, it starts appearing orange. On further increase, it starts appearing blue. Okay? So blue is the maximum intensity. After that, even if you keep on increasing the temperature, there is going to be no change in color. Right? So, blue and white ultimately then it will appear to us as white. Okay? So wavelength of maximum emission from a black body is inversely proportional to temperature. This is wavelength of the emitted radiation from the black body that is inversely proportional to temperature. Shorter the wavelength, then what will happen? Higher is going to be the temperature. Right? Shorter the wavelength, higher is the temperature. Radiation of black body is determined only by temperature. That's a, that also I have told you. <coughs> that it is only temperature dependent. Okay? It will not depend upon the shape or the size or the composition of any substance. It will only depend upon the temperature. And then in practice there is no perfect black body. Practically there is no perfect black body except for graphite. Except for graphite. Graphite absorbs all the radiation falling on it. Except 3%. So, only 3% of the radiation is not absorbed by graphite. Rest, all the radiations are absorbed by graphite. Therefore, that is known as near to perfect black body. Okay. So, after the black body radiation, telling us that we cannot explain the effect of temperature on any body, uh, taking into account only the electromagnetic radiation, but there is certain particle behavior which is also present which shows that the black body radiation or the black body is only temperature dependent. 
okay because while increasing the temperature we are going to increase the intensity of radiation right intensity of radiation means what more and more electrons are getting excited so that gave a clue to the particle nature of wave the second phenomenon which gave us the same information was the photoelectric effect photoelectric effect the scientist who discovered photoelectric effect his name was h hertz now what did he say he gave us an idea of the photoelectric effect he said that if light of suitable frequency falls on a metal surface here we are taking a detector right and here we have taken a metal so if light of certain frequency falls on the surface of a metal electrons are ejected now if we are completing this circuit with placing an ammeter in the center as soon as the electrons they transfer and they hit this detector there is a deflection shown on the ammeter thereby showing that there is what there is certain current flowing through the cell and current is flowing due to emission of electrons theek hai so photoelectric effect kya bolta hai it says that whenever light of suitable frequency called threshold frequency falls on the surface of a metal electrons are ejected right electrons are ejected this is what the photoelectric effect was now obviously if something is moving it should possess kinetic energy okay so it was said that the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons kinetic energy of the ejected electrons was directly proportional to frequency of radiation right but was independent of intensity of radiation independent of intensity of radiation so graphically if a graph was drawn between kinetic energy and frequency the graph came to be as a straight line where this point that is the threshold frequency no electron is ejected till the threshold frequency is attained and every metal has a different value of threshold frequency right and then if a graph is plotted between kinetic energy and intensity the graph comes as a straight line thereby showing that the kinetic energy is independent of the intensity okay now let's let's take an example to explain this let's say that we've gone on a beach right and
and on the beach on the seashore we have placed balls beach balls okay now what happens in the beach what is happening that as the wave is going to come it is going to hit the beach balls and give it a jump and the beach balls they are going to move from their position right now how much is the movement of that beach balls it will depend upon what it is going to depend upon the intensity or the frequency of the wave it will depend upon the frequency of the wave right so the frequency of the wave more the frequency more the those beach balls they are going to get better push and they will be moved more right but if the intensity of the waves we are talking of the intensity of the wave will not give the beach balls any different kind of an, an effect it will give it the same effect right so that is how we can show we can take an example of the beach balls and explain the photoelectric effect now when we are talking when there were lot of experiments done to explain the photoelectric effect then there were certain observations which were made the first observation was as i just told you that the electrons are ejected from the metal surface as soon as the beam of light strikes it as soon as the beam of light strikes it which means that there is no lag it does not happen ki the light has fallen and the electron jumps after a little while that does not happen as soon as the light will fall the electron will be ejected right this was the first observation which was made the second observation was that for ejection of electrons a certain certain minimum amount of frequency was required ejection of electrons certain minimum amount of frequency was required and this frequency was known as the threshold frequency and as i said that threshold frequency for different metals that is going to be different okay clear so what are we saying over here that there are metals like cesium potassium and rubidium they have very low values of ionization energies therefore for these it is easy to show photoelectric effect these metals show photoelectric effect easily okay now how much the number of electrons which are ejected the number of electrons ejected depends upon what that is going to depend upon the intensity of radiation the incident radiation right so we have two things that first of all threshold frequency is required kinetic energy also is independent of intensity of radiation but the number of electrons ejected that is going to be what that depends upon the intensity of radiation now this photoelectric effect that was given a mathematical concept by max planck so max planck gave his quantum theory saying that what did he say max planck what did he say that electrons are emitted discontinuously and not continuously yeah radiate energy when we talk about electrons over here we say that radiate energy is emitted discontinuously and not in the form of small packets of energy in the form of small packets of energy called 
toàn cân Right? And the energy associated with each quantum was directly proportional to frequency of radiation. Or we can also say that E is equal to H nu, where H is the Planck's constant, right? And it has a fixed value of. 6.62 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second. Okay, so over here we knew we know that mu that is equal to C for lambda. So E that will become equal to H C for lambda. Over here H is a constant, C is also a constant. So therefore we can say that E is Inversely proportional to lambda. Higher the energy of radiation, less is going to be lambda, and this is what the max, uh, this is what the black body radiation was also suggesting. Okay. Now, in case of light, when we are talking, the quantum. In case of light, that is known as photons. Okay. So this is what the Planck's quantum theory was. Now according to Einstein, Einstein said that energy that is equal to what? Mc square. Okay. Over here we are taking into consideration the velocity of light and m is the mass of the electron. Yeah, photon over here because we are talking of the photon. This relationship gives us the particle nature of waves. And this relationship is giving us the wave nature of electromagnetic radiations. Okay? So thus it was suggested that any radiation possess both particle as well as wave character. Max Planck explained the photoelectric effect very, you can say brilliantly. Let's see how. It is said that the energy of the electron, of any electron which is present, that is the sum total of the binding energy, the energy with which it is bound to the electron and kinetic energy. Okay, now E over here that is equal to H nu according to Max Planck. Binding energy that will be equal to H nu naught, right? Plus kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of any ejected electron that will be equal to what? H nu minus H nu naught and if we take H as common we get H nu minus nu naught. Right? So over here there are three observations or three conditions. The first condition is that if the frequency of radiation is equal to threshold frequency. The first condition. So if this is equal to this, this becomes zero. Zero into anything is also zero. So for this condition, kinetic energy that is going to be equal to zero. Got it? Then second, if frequency is less than threshold frequency if frequency is less than threshold frequency then over here magnetic energy will be a negative value right so over here we say that magnetic energy is negative and no electron is ejected okay then the third condition is that mu is greater than u naught. That is threshold frequency is greater than, uh, sorry, frequency of radiation is greater than threshold frequency. In that case, kinetic energy that is going to become positive. Okay, and electrons will be ejected. Now over here, this relationship that is 
is H nu naught. This is also known as this is also represented by omega naught, and this is also known as work function. Okay. 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 The first question is what is the ratio between energies of two radiations? One with wavelength six thousand Armstrong and the other two thousand Armstrong. This is our first question. So in this question, lambda one that is given to us as six thousand Armstrong, okay, and lambda two is given to us as two thousand Armstrong, right? Now what do we have to find over here? Ratio between the energies. We know that energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. So e2 upon e1 that will become equal to lambda 1 upon lambda 2, right? Lambda 1 given to us is 6000 and 2000. So the ratio of e2 is to e1. That is equal to three is to one, okay? Or this can also be written as e two is equal to three times e one, okay? So this is the first question. Let's move on to the second question. The second question is calculate the wavelength, wave number. Frequency of photon having energy equal to three electron volt. Over here, the energy given to us is three electron volt. First, we have to convert it into either joules or we convert it into whatever the value of h we are taking over here. Okay, let's say that we are taking the value of uh, this thing as h as It is given to you as 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 27 ohms. That is given to you in the question. 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 ohm second. Right. So we have to first convert this electron volt into ohm second. What is the conversion factor? One electron volt that is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power. Minus 12 ohms, right? So three electron volt will be equal to what? Three into 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 12 ohms, right? Now we know that E that is equal to H C mol lambda. We have to calculate lambda, so lambda will become equal to H C upon E. Okay, the value of H given to us is 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 27. The value of C that is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8. Upon the value of energy is 3 into 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 12. So when we calculate lambda. Lambda is coming to 4.132 into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter. 4.132 okay. okay. Then we can calculate new. New is C lambda, or new can also be calculated from energy. E is equal to H two. Okay, but let's say over here u is equal to c upon lambda, so that will be three into ten raised to power eight meters per second. This is given in centimeters, so this has to be converted into meters. Or what we can do over here is take the value in centimeters, and over here also we can take the value in centimeters. Okay, divided by four point One three two into ten raised to the power five, right? So this is coming to as what three 
frequency is coming to as 7.26 into 10 raised to power 14. Per second. Then the last one that is equal to what? That is new bar. Wave number. So wave number is equal to decimal number of lambda. Lambda over here is 4.132 into 10 raised to power 5. So lambda when cal uh, new bar when calculated comes to 2.42 into 10 raised to power 4. Per centimeter. Okay. So this is how this question had to be done. Let's go on to the next question. Question number 3 is electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 242 nanometers is just sufficient to ionize the sodium atom. Calculate the ionization energy in kilojoules per mole. H is given to us as 6.6. .6. Okay. So lambda given to us in this question is
upon 10 is to power minus 19. And this one when calculated comes to 2.01. into 10 raised to power 18. Remember one thing that over here if you have if in the answer you getting a negative uh, value of the power 10 raised to power negative value in the answer that means your answer is wrong. Because when we calculating number of electrons number of electrons has to be always positive. It can never be negative. Got it? So this is the formula First of all, in this question, you calculate the energy and then henceforward you have to divide the energy given to you in the question by the energy calculated. That gives us the number of electrons. Okay? Alright, let's go on to question number 5. Question number 5. Fifth question is, a bulb emits light of wavelength. Lambda is equal to 4500 Armstrongs. Right? So lambda over here that is given to us in the question as 4500 Armstrongs. And also the bulb is rated as 150 Watt and 8% of the energy is emitted as light. So only 8% of the energy is emitted to calculate that energy that will be equal to what? 8 upon 100 into 150, right? So this will come to 1.20 or 12. 8 finds a 40 and 8 runs a 8, 12, right? So this is coming as 12. Right? So only 12 watt of the energy that is being emitted. Clear? Are we right or are we wrong? Yeah, I think we are right. Then after that, now you calculate the energy corresponding to lambda. E is equal to HC for lambda. So this will be equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power. Minus 34 into 3 into 10 raised to power 8 divided by lambda. Lambda is 4500 Armstrongs. So 4500 into 10 raised to power minus 10. The energy when calculated it is coming to 4.42 into 10 raised to power minus 90 joules. Four point four two into ten raised to power minus nineteen. Right now to calculate the number of photons, number of photons that will be equal to what? It will be equal to energy given to us upon energy calculated. 12.4.42 into 10 raised to power minus 19. This is coming to 27.2 into 10 raised to power 18 photons. Okay? Alright then. Question number 6 is a, a near ultraviolet photon of 300 nanometers is absorbed by a gas and then re-emitted as two photons. One photon is red with a wavelength of 760 nanometer. What would be the wave number of the second photon? Okay, so over here they have given us uh, the total energy. Okay, and we have two photons. So let's Say that the energy absorbed will be equal to the energy absorbed by both the photons. So that is sum of energy of two quanta.
sum of energy of two quanta. Okay. Let's say that the energy absorbed that is equal to let's say for lambda, lambda given to us is three hundred nanometers. So that will be three hundred is there, na? Ah, three hundred nanometers to meters. We convert it. Three hundred into ten raised to the minus nine. ठीक है, then that is equal to the energy of the first photon. So for the first photon, lambda is given to us as 760. So HCF on 760 into 10 raised to power minus 9 plus HCF on the next lambda is not given to us. So let's take it as lambda and convert it into meters. So that will be equal to 10 raised to power minus 9 meters. From here we have to now calculate lambda. How will you calculate lambda from here? We can take Hc common. 1 upon 760 into 10 raised to power minus 9 plus 1 upon lambda into 10 raised to power minus 9. Okay. Hc, when we take it on this side, Hc and Hc can be cancelled. So what do we have? 1 upon 300 into 10 raised to power minus 9, that is equal to 